Let me start out by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for having me on the show, uh, on the conference. I'm going to tell you guys right up front, I'm not going to be here long because this is my house. But listen, I had to come. Remember, said, it, it, Sheikh said he called me and he said, come on. Funny story, the first time I met Brother Kazwini, I didn't know there were so many Kazwinis. Let me just say that, Brother Jake. Like everywhere I went, there was one. Uh, Michigan, Fresno, California. I went to London. There was two Kazwinis. Listen, that's not the point, though. I want to say that I'm, I'm happy to be here hanging out um, and, and just welcoming the love that you guys are giving. And I wish you nothing but the best. All right? So I'm going to tell you all a little bit about myself. First of all, I was not born Muslim. I just want you to know that I converted. But you know what? I'm still hanging in there. I'm still fighting the good fight. But I'm talking about the good fight, man. You know, it's just you have everything going on with COVID and the pandemic. You know, and I just had a, a, something I want to share about our children. You know, my daughter made me really proud uh, just a short time ago and almost got me killed at the same time. We were driving down the road. This is what happened. I got pulled over by a cop. All right. So, you know, I'm telling my daughter, I don't want any problems, baby. Just be quiet. Make sure your seatbelt's on. I got my hands on the steering wheel 10 and 2. You know what I'm saying? So the cop comes up to the window, taps on the window. You know, he's like, do you know why I pulled you over? I wanted to see. I wanted to say because I'm a good looking Muslim, but I couldn't say that. So what I had to say was, I don't know. Brothers and sisters, he goes, the reason I pulled you over, wait for it. The reason I pulled you over is because you were texting and driving. That's what he told me. I was texting and driving. Now, I've heard a lot of things as a black man. Uh, put your hands on your head. Don't move. Any drugs in the car. I have never heard you were texting and driving. And immediately, because I've never heard it before, I start to argue. I was like, sir, I was not texting and driving. He goes, yes, you were. No, you weren't. Yes, you were. No, you weren't. We get in this big tussle. And my daughter, alhamdulillah, she jumps in the middle of the argument. She goes, Mr. Officer, you are wrong. I was like, go ahead, girl. She goes, no, sir. See, my daddy was not texting and driving. I was like, mm. She goes, mm-mm. He was reading his emails. I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, girl, you just like your mama. <laughs> but this is a great event, man. This is a great event. You know, I, I remember, uh, like I said, meeting the Sheikh down in Boca Raton. He had an event down in Boca Raton. And they were getting protested at the same time. I don't know if you remember, Shake. He was getting protested. Brothers and sisters, I'm nosy. I was waiting for the protest. It was in Boca Raton, Florida, which is a huge retirement community. I'm going to tell you something. I looked out at the protesters. I think the average age of the protesters was like 906 years old. I was like, you don't need to be out here protesting. Don't you have grandchildren to come out here? And it was so funny because I was like, you know what? We've got to learn to let go of things. I'm like, they were too old to be protesting. And I'm like, even that situation, I'm not a good person when it comes to Dawa. I'm going to tell you why. I believe with all the surveillance of FBI and CIA, if you don't know anything about Muslims by this point in time, the problem is you. And I'm going to put this in, in a little bit of a showcase, if you will. As a part of being a comedian, I have to take a lot of trips up till COVID. I have to take a lot of flights. And what I do to make sure I get the one we're going, I take a lot of early flights. So sometimes I'm on a plane as Fajr comes in. So, you know, I'm sitting on a plane and brothers and sisters, let me add this pretext. I'm in a very good mood because I got upgraded. You know how Muslims are when they get upgraded. They, let, they like to let everyone else know who you didn't get upgraded. So here I am. I'm in first class. I'm feeling myself, you know, and I'm saying, you know what? Allah has a sense of humor because beside me is a guy who's drinking at five in the morning. Now, I can't say who it is. And people want to know, my name is Preacher Moss, P-R-E-A-C-H-E-R-M-O-S-S. -E -E -S. So here I am with this guy. I mean, I'm upgrading in his first class seat. This guy is drinking, you know, at, at five in the morning. And I can't say anything, brothers and sisters. You know why? Because he paid for his seat and I got upgraded. But as a Muslim, I represent it for us, brother. I'm, saying, I'm here to tell you, I represent it for us. You know why? Because I'm not a punk. You know what I did to let him know I didn't approve of the drinking? This is what I did. I took the armrest and I slammed it down really hard. Bam! Just like that. Bam! Sort of like a boundary, like halal haram, halal haram, halal haram, right? So um, we're sitting there 
And what I like to do a lot of times, you know, it, to relax, uh, I like to read a little Quran. So this guy is sitting there. Now, he really doesn't like me sitting beside him because he knows I'm Muslim, and but I'm black and Muslim, which means he don't want to say anything because he says the wrong thing. He's probably going to get beat up twice. All right. So what he does to voice his disapproval, he doesn't say anything, but he makes this subtle noise. Here's the subtle noise he makes. And I pick it up. I'm like, what? He goes, and I'm not weak. I went right back at him. So we're going back and forth. So finally, I say, hey, is there a problem? He looks at me. He goes, you're a Muslim, I see. And I looked at him. I said, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> so he's quiet. He don't want any problems with me. He's looking straight ahead. He's feeling intimidated. And from a Muslim point of view, I'm like, good. All right. So he sobers up a, money, a minute. He wants to make a conversation I don't want to have. I don't like to talk to people early. You know, I don't like to talk to people early in the morning. So this guy is feeling bad. He's like, excuse me. I'm like, yes, sir. He goes, uh, we got off on the wrong foot. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mike. I'm like, good for you. He goes, no, no, no. My, my name is Mike. Uh, I'm a doctor. He goes, what's your name? I go, my name is Preach. He goes, what do you do for a living? Now I'm a suspect, brothers and sisters. I don't know this guy. And we've already had a problem. He goes, what do you do for a living? I said, well, Mike, I'm a comedian. He goes, what kind of comedian? I was like, funny. He goes, no, what kind of comedian? Urban or da-da-da? Are you blue? I don't know what I'm thinking. I go, I'm a Muslim comedian. He looks at me. He goes, that's impossible. I'm like, what? He goes, that's impossible. I'm like, how is that? He says, he says you can't be a Muslim comedian. He says, because Muslims don't laugh. I was like, what? He goes, I don't mean to upset you again, but... I work in an office full of Muslims. I never see them see them laugh. I said, Mike. He said, yeah. I said, they wait till you leave. <laughs> now, on another flight, because people are interested in Muslims, that's why people wind up converting to Islam. That's why I think. They ask a lot of questions. Because you're on that road. more questions you are, the closer you are to the team. It's a, this is the closer to the team. Look, the closer you are to the team. All right. So I'm on a flight, you know, and here's the other part. When I take early flights, I like to make a little dua for myself and the pilot. So in this one particular flight, I can't make dua because it's this lady in the next seat to me. It was a white lady. It wasn't racial. She was nosy. You know, nosy trumps race every time. I'm trying to make dua and I can't make dua because this lady is talking all the way through my dua like we're in a documentary or something. I'm trying to pray and I hear this from the next seat. Oh, that's interesting. What's he doing? What's he saying? Is he rapping? Why does, he, why does the black man have his hands in the air? Is he robbing himself? Now, brothers and sisters, I know that what's going on, she wants to have a conversation. And in this point in time, it would have been really, really nice that I gave her some dawah. I was like, nah. I wanted to tell the lady I was praying, but no, I didn't want to make it easy for her. So I didn't say I was praying. I used my limited Arabic and I looked at this woman with a straight face and I said, she goes, what are you doing? I looked at her, I said, I was making dua. Like the Black Panther took Shahada. I was making dua. She looks at me, she goes, really? Every once in a while when I'm fitting myself, I put an extra syllable in the word that's not there. I was making dua wa. She turns around and goes, oh my gosh, what's the wa wa? I was like, jeez. So... I'm like, lady, calm down. Here's the deal. I don't want to go any further. I go, listen, I was praying to my Lord. This lady goes off. Oh my gosh, you pray, I pray. We could have prayed together. We could have had a prayer circle. We could have held hands and praise the Lord. And then she just stopped. She goes, um, you are a Christian, aren't you? I was like, nope. <laughs> she says, no. I said, mm-mm. She goes, so when did you stop? I was like, this morning. Silence, right? The plane lands. She looks at me, goes, um, I hope you don't mind, but... Um, what were you praying for? I was like, silence. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you guys a little story. And I think it's important that I tell this story. You know, um, like I said, I wasn't born uh, Muslim. I converted. I was doing an interview for some young fellas. Uh, I think it was on Thursday. And being on the program, I can understand. They actually thought I was Shia. I'm not Shia. You know, I'm I'm not Shia, and I, I I don't really categorize myself. People go, "Are you Sunni?" I'm like, "Look, I'm gonna tell you guys something." When I took my Shahada, I wasn't Sunni, I wasn't Shia, 
I was a nation of Islam. I was an Ahmadi. You know what I was? I was happy. You know why? Happy that somebody in the religion came to save me where I was. I'm going to tell you guys a little story, a little culture before I get you out of here. You know what I'm saying? And this is really, really important. See, when I came to Islam, uh, it was it was interesting because a brother came up to me and changed my life. He was in the nation of Islam. Okay. And for any of you who feel like you've been prosecuted or somebody bothers you, I'm going to tell you something. I figured out why nobody bothers the nation of Islam because whatever they say, they say it twice to let you know they mean it. They do. I was on a basketball court at 16 years old. A black man in a bow tie walked up behind me. And these are the words he said, change my life. I'm getting ready to shoot a shot. This is what he said. Oh, black man, black man. My brother, my brother. Yes, yes. Young soldier, young soldier. And I was like, whoa, word. That's deep. And for all you brothers out there that are not married, it works. This guy, that's how I got my wife. I almost didn't need a Wally. I just walked into this. I was like, oh, my sister, my sister. I'm going to marry you, marry you, marry you. Going to make you happy, make you happy. Yes, yes. So there I was, you know, and I'm going to be honest, brothers and sisters. I'm in the masjid. I'm happy about being Muslim. Well, I'm not, I haven't taken my shahada, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm in a good place. Take note of this. I'm in a good place. I'm really happy. You know, and the brother walks in and he's saying, brother, he's like, oh, black man, black man. He said, what are you doing, black man? I said, I'm reading the Quran. He goes, what are you reading? I said, I'm reading out Fatiha. And he's like, what do you want? He said, you want, you want me to, he said, let me hear it. I was like, what do you mean? He just recited to me. I was like, word? He was like, yeah. And I started reading it, and this is how it got me, brother. Says, I started reading. He goes, black man, stop. I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, brother, that's the most beautiful thing I heard all day, all day. I was like, really? He goes, mm-hmm. He said, have you taken, you ever heard of Shahada? I was like, no. He was like, repeat after me. And there I was, in the front of a masjid, get ready to take my Shahada. I'm so nervous, brothers and sisters. I've forgotten all the little Arabic and everything. Alhamdulillah, they repeated in English. I get through, I take my Shahada, and it doesn't end. I'm a new Muslim. As soon as it's finished, some brother, I don't know, he jumps up and he yells, Tak beer. And like 500 Muslims are like, Allahu Akbar, Tak beer, Allahu Akbar, Tak beer, Allahu Akbar. And I'm sitting there like, yo, that is dope. And in my heart, I'm thinking, you know what? If I stick around long enough in this religion, one day, one day, one day, I'm going to get to be the tack beer guy. <laughs> and I waited two years to try and be the tack beer guy. One day I was like, I couldn't do, I couldn't put it off anymore. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm going to get my tack beer in today. I've been seeing brothers for two I'm going to get my tack beer in. I was like, whenever the imam says something good on the kuppah, I'm just going to yell tack beer. And it was almost like jumping rope, like double, double dutch. And I'm like, I'm going to get it in. He said something. I just jumped up. I was like, tack beer. And nobody said anything. I was like, oh, this, you're going to do me like that? Because you know when you do tack beer, you got to do the other two. Tack beer, tack beer. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. But that's the fun part. Plus you get crazy Muslims that come around, you know, and I, I love my crazy Muslims. And crazy Muslims come around, they want to help you. But I'm like, I know you want to help me with my dean, but I think you should work on your dean. I had one brother come up to me. He goes, um, I heard that you're a new Muslim. I said, yes, sir. He goes, here's my card. I was like, oh, okay, what's your, what's your card? He goes, uh, that card right there. He goes, you call me when you're ready to be a good Muslim. I was like, yo, I didn't know it was a business. You know, 1-800-BE-GOOD and be a good Muslim. I didn't know that. So I had a fun. I called a brother. I was like, hey, this is Preacher Moss. Just took my shahada. Hey, listen, man, I'm trying to be a good Muslim. He goes, come over to my house right away. And I drove over and I get to the brother's house. I was like, hey, man, I'm ready to be a good Muslim. I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be, you know, some, some recitation or something. He goes, are you ready to be a good Muslim? So I said, yeah. He said, you ready? I said, yeah. He said, are you ready? I said, give it to me. People, this guy gave me a piece of mishwack. And the sad part about it, he was like, I was like, what do I do with this? He goes, put it in your mouth. I did. He goes, you look Muslim already. I'm like, what? And the crazy part was, it was as long as my arm, people. I didn't know you could cut it. I'm walking around Washington, D.C. with a whole tree coming out of the side of my mouth. You see what I'm saying? It's just a ridiculous part. 
So I know we have to wrap up here momentarily, but you know, and I hope you guys don't mind. I keep it real. You know, I keep it real. I whether whether wherever we are, I keep it real. Because I love my Muslim brothers and sisters. You know, I love our Muslim brothers and sisters. I love the community and the personality that it presents. Tell the truth. <clears throat> I bet you there's someone in your masjid, just like in my masjid, just around like around the world. It doesn't matter. I probably happened to you this Friday or before the pandemic. You can remember this. There you are. You've worked all hard to get to the masjid. There you are. You're finally sitting there. You're focused. You listen to the kutbah. The katib is rolling. You are focused. And then out of nowhere, some brother just walks up to the front of the masjid to tell everybody to move up. Hey, come, come this way, please. Come, come. Come this way. He tells everybody to move up. Here's the killer. Then he just leaves. He doesn't even pray. He's been doing this for 30 years. I don't even think he's Muslim. I think he just comes in on Friday, tells all the Muslims to move up, and then he goes back to his job at the airport. All right, everybody, come on. <laughs> but let me uh, let me wrap up because I know you guys have a lot of program to do, a lot of program to uh, get through, and I'm always happy to uh, come in and, and, and celebrate Islam anywhere. You know, I like to celebrate Islam anywhere, you know, because they have so many misconceptions about Muslims. You know, the latest one I heard about six months ago was that um, <clears throat> ISIS uh, was a Muslim uh, organization. That's what I heard. ISIS was a Muslim organization. I was like, dude, that's a lie. It's a lie. You know why? ISIS has been around about, what, seven, eight years? They haven't had one fundraiser. <laughs> Because you know how we are about fundraising. I don't know if you guys are going to have it on here, but I'm going to tell you something. I am a veteran of bad fundraisers. I don't know about you, but I believe everybody out here, if you go to a man or a woman, you're alone and you search your heart, you've probably been to a bad fundraiser. I'm the king of bad fundraisers. I'm at, I've been to fundraisers and realized it's a fine line between a fundraiser and a hostage situation. I was in one fundraiser. It was in the hood of Cleveland, brothers and sisters, the hood of Cleveland. It was a bad neighborhood. All I'm saying is, uh, in the rest of Cleveland, it got dark at 5.30. Where I was, it got dark at 3.15. That's all I'm saying. And they brought this guy in to do the fundraising. He was real arrogant. He didn't understand that the people are struggling. Be gentle when you ask. Be gentle. Nope. He got in front of these people. He goes, to begin the fundraising, I'd like to see someone give me $50,000. Somebody yelled out from the back, me too. <laughs> But my favorite fundraiser was a couple of years ago. And the reason why it was my, fun, my favorite fundraiser, brothers and sisters, is that it was different. It was slick. It was innovative. They didn't have one fundraiser at the event. They had two fundraisers. The first guy came up. He was like the warm-up act. He was really, really short. Seriously, when he got behind the podium, we couldn't even see him. He started talking. I thought it was my conscience talking to me. He was like, please give. So I was like, where is that coming from? Now the second guy who came up, he was a gangster. He was from Saudi Arabia. He'd been in the country like 15 minutes. Uh, I don't know where he got his English. I don't know uh, what version of Rosetta Stone he was using that week, but it wasn't working. However, I would give my man credit. Though his English was horrible, he had a lot of confidence. And I roll with cats that got confidence. And I knew he was a bad man when he stepped to the mic because the first thing he did was he stroked his beard for like seven minutes. And then he began. Okay. Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. <clears throat> now, question. Why do Muslim brothers get a microphone and go, listen to me? That's the function of the microphone, fool. We can't help but listen to you. He's like, okay, listen to me. Listen to me. He goes, okay, this is fundraiser. You have the money. We need the money. You're going to give it to me. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then he got happy when they were giving him money. He was like, okay, we're going to build a school. It's going to be a Muslim school. It's going to have Muslim children in it. 
but some books in it, but some decks in it, but some paper in it, and some pencils in it, and three black children. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> well, listen, everybody, that's my time. Inshallah, I will be back tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the conference. I thank you for your time. Have a blessed day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Keep smiling. Preacher Moss.